Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 21st, 2021, according on 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot to talk about today, including the potential for Hurricane Henri to be impacting the northeastern United States over the next several days and what impacts that is going to bring. And the look at the return of a very active period setting up within the next few weeks. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that, again, we still have our two storms out here. Now, Tropical Storm Grace uh, inland over Mexico. Uh, this intensified to a major hurricane last night before making landfall in Mexico. That is now weakening and moving inland. The remnant circulation could develop back over the eastern Pacific, but move on out to sea. We have Hurricane Henri out here, which is now moving towards the Northeast United States, and this will be impacting parts like New York City, uh, New Jersey, and Connecticut and Rhode Island over the next several days, and a new tropical wave here. I'm not really concerned about this, but we'll be monitoring this over the next several days, and we'll talk about that more here uh, in just a little bit. So looking here at Henri again, now sustained winds have increased to roughly right around 75 miles per hour. Uh, since the latest plane was in there. Now, this is expected to be a hurricane on approach into the Long Island area. Again, we're really targeting a landfall point from eastern Long Island in through about central Connecticut at this point. And the cone has definitely shrunk today. Now, uh, there is, again, still some uncertainty here because, again, we could still see a track on the, the right side here or the left side. It is possible that, again, we could still see a landfall here somewhere in Rhode Island or a landfall as west as New York City. But it's becoming a little bit more apparent today that the landfall point is probably going to be somewhere along eastern Long Island in through Connecticut here. Now, uh, this will be weakening. You notice here that these yellows here, this is the hurricane. Uh, this is a Category 1 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. This will weaken to a tropical storm, a strong tropical storm by the time it makes landfall with 70 mile per hour winds. We can look here at the visible satellite imagery. And again, the storm overall does not look all that bad today. We have a little bit more in the way of banding and a proto eye structure, which is right here in the center with convection surrounding it. There is not a lot of deep convection in terms of having storms that are over about seven, minus 70 degrees Celsius, but that's mainly because of the tropopause height, which is at negative 65 degrees Celsius. And typically when you have a tropopause height uh, like that, you can't really get that deep convection to uh, erupt unless if you get an overshooting storm. In this case, we don't really have that. And again, there is a little bit of dry air that is trying to work on the back side of this, but it is very well protected by the inner core. And again, we'll have another recon plane going in there later today. Now, the recon plane that was in there from earlier this afternoon or this morning, rather, uh, did find a couple of interesting structural uh, changes. So first of all, we have pressures that are in the 990s today instead of pressures that were sitting uh, roughly about 1,000 millibars yesterday. Pressures have now fallen uh, into the low 990s. And there is some semblance of an inner core structure in the radius of maximum winds, which is still quite large, but there is some hints that the radius of maximum wind uh, might be starting to decrease. And again, this was earlier this morning. But we noticed that, again, we did have some hurricane force flight level winds along this path, and the strongest wind was on the outbound leg here right before they turned and start climbing uh, to return back to uh, Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi. But we can tell that, again, the sustained wind uh, out of this, the surface wind was only about 55 knots, but flight level wind was roughly about 82 knots. This is blended together. Uh, to create the 65 knots uh, surface wind that the Hurricane Center went with. 65 knots is correlating to about 75 miles per hour, uh, just for all those you wondering out there. But again, the eye structure today really does indicate that the storm has been intensifying at least a little bit, probably nothing rapid. Again, we'll have another plane in there later this afternoon to determine what's going on. Now, if we kind of zoom out here, what we notice is uh, interacting on the storm right now. We have this broad upper level trough that we've been talking about over the last several days. And this upper level trough now and this uh, upper level low is now sitting over parts of Virginia and North Carolina. And this is providing a southerly flow, kind of a southeasterly flow aloft over top of the storm, 
We've been dealing with a lot of northerly shear that's impacting the storm over the last several days, but this change in direction here is counteracting some of that. Now, you notice, again, there's a lot of deep convection out here. This is where the triple pause height is a little bit uh, is a little bit higher, allowing for deeper convection to develop here. Now, we can also tell that, again, we do have some of this dry air on this trough that will be working in, trying to push some of that dry air, but it's probably not going to be enough. Now, we notice that right now the storm is sitting within a pretty favorable environment with sea surface temperatures that are fairly warm. Now, as this begins to move northward, though, you can kind of see the delineation where the uh, colder cloud tops begin to really focus here on the south. And part of that, again, is the triple pause height. But right up about here is where the sea surface temperatures become very borderline. And up above here is where the sea surface temperatures are not conducive for tropical cyclones to really maintain themselves. Now, given the fact that this will have a little bit of a faster forward motion into Long Island and perhaps even uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island, this will be supportive for a little bit of a stronger storm to maintain itself for at least a little while. The storm will begin to slow down, and one of the reasons for that, we can take a look here at the H4 forecast, and we'll look here at the 500 millibar vorticity. Right now, again, here's this broad upper level low that's going to be dipping southeast and kind of pinwheeling the storm like this. And uh, over time here, we also have this ridge that's setting up over here, and it's also trying to push eastward, but it is creating kind of the northwesterly flow aloft here. Now, this flow begins to break down. The steering component begins to break down as a matter of influences between this uh, upper level low here and the ridge here begins to create kind of an offsetting steering flow. So initially, you have a pretty fast motion in towards the uh, Long Island in the Northeast and New England, but eventually that steering flow begins to slow down as the upper level low here and the storm kind of become uh, almost parallel to one another. And again, you have this ridge right here, which is also keeping things minimal like that. And again, this basically creates an offsetting steering motion. And at this point, you would have a storm that's moving fairly slowly inland. And there's going to be the potential for very heavy rainfall. We can tell here that on the H4 for a relative humidity forecast, again, we can kind of see all this rain that will be setting up well to the east of where this uh, center track is going to be. And that's one of the things to be reminded of, that the center position is not really going to matter as there will be some very heavy rainfall, especially on the western side of this. Now, we can also look here at the 200 millibar wind. Again, right now the storm is under some pretty good flow aloft. Again, we have an outflow channel uh, from this upper level low here and an upper level low here, kind of creating these dual outflow channels that's uh, allowing the storm to be ventilated pretty good. And it's kind of one of the reasons why, again, we're dealing with uh, an intensifying storm this afternoon. Eventually, though, the sea surface temperatures will begin to weaken here uh, by really tomorrow morning, uh, late tonight into tomorrow morning. And uh, we can look here at the wind field. Again, this will be an expanding wind field on approach to Connecticut, Rhode Island, and eastern Long uh, Connecticut, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and eastern part of Long Island, and there will be the potential for some very significant storm surge. Storm surge amounts right now forecasted by the National Hurricane Center are forecast to be roughly about three to five feet, basically from eastern Long Island all the way through Nantucket Sound, and uh, parts of uh, really the bay there near Providence uh, could be dealing with a little bit higher storm surge, and even storm surge all the way up to uh, the, Her the Hermack River here, uh, you know, could be dealing with some fairly significant uh, amounts there. And even uh, New Jersey could be dealing with that storm surge of one to three feet. So there will be some impacts there. A uh, rainfall forecast here from the Weather Prediction Center. Again, the Weather Prediction Center is going with a moderate risk for flash flooding on day two. Uh, and this mainly encompasses all the way from Hartford, Connecticut to Albany, New York, and all the way down here, including New York City, a slight risk from uh, basically from near D.C. to Philadelphia and all the way up just south here, a couple hundred miles south of Burlington, Vermont. Marginal risk all the way up to Portland, Maine and Nantucket. And again, then on day three, that focus would shift generally towards the kind of northern part there. And again, this would mainly focus on a storm that is stalling over this region. Again, rainfall amounts could be as high as six to eight inches in spots with locally higher amounts. So make sure you do take uh, precautions seriously. 
Again, follow your local weather service office and uh, emergency management for decision making. And of course, if you're in an evacuation zone, make sure to evacuate immediately. Looking for in the long run here, this is the GFS velocity potential anomaly. This is out to September 1st. And again, not really going to go into depth in this video about what we could be talking about down the road. Uh, but there is the potential that we could be dealing with a, a very active start to September and into October, potentially even as far as November. A very strong convectively coupled Kelvin wave and Mount and Julian oscillation will be shifting back over the Atlantic Basin over the next several weeks or so. And once this traverses over Africa, this will likely light up the board. We'll likely see maybe one or two storms form here in the eastern Pacific, but not as many as last time, just because the background state and the climatology for this time of the year. This will traverse into the Atlantic Basin, and this is when things will really begin to light up with time. All right. So for, with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.